Okay, if you're definitely taking algebra, you're going to need to know what I'm going to be talking about in order to pass. It's a huge uh, a topic, very, very critical, and in the more advanced algebra courses that you may take, uh, so I'm talking about like uh, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Intermediate Algebra, uh, this becomes even more important. But uh, this is really an interesting um, thing that we're going to be talking about here because there's a connection to what you were doing way back in the good old days when you were in like the third grade, fourth grade, and uh, you were doing arithmetic. And probably a lot of you were thinking, well, when I do arithmetic, I'm working with just basic numbers. You know, that's like one math. And then when I take algebra, that's like a completely different math. But no, math is connected. All right. It's, uh, you know, it's all like one big bucket of <laughs> mathematics. It's not like, you know, you do arithmetic over here and that's like the only thing you do. It has nothing to do with algebra. That is uh, not the case at all. And you're going to see this in this particular uh, video. What we're talking about is polynomial along division. OK, so we're dividing. Now, this is interesting. You might like, well, could we use this division symbol? Yes, we could use that division symbol to represent this, but there's, you know, I have this little thing right here. Um, as you may recognize from problems like, say, 3 goes into 42. All right, this is exactly what we're going to be doing here. So um, if you never heard of polynomial long division, this would be a good introduction to it. And uh, not only am I going to show you polynomial long division, I'm going to show you a shortcut method that we can use sometimes uh, with polynomial long division, they absolutely need to know. It's super cool. It's called synthetic division. So we're going to talk about that as well. So again, this is just a quick introduction to uh, polynomial division in general, but you absolutely need to know this uh, to be successful in algebra. So we're going to get into this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, uh, I've been teaching for decades, all right, and along that time, I kind of felt the passion to create something special for my students. Uh, so I've created what I like to believe is one of the best uh, math help programs there is. I've been working on my uh, uh, math courses and my math help program for 15 plus years. Very uh, proud of it because I've put a lot of effort into it, but effectively I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, I'm uh, finishing up with pre-calculus. We'll have that out in a couple of weeks. Uh, but I also do a lot in the, in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, HiSET, TASC, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, CLEP exam, ACUPLACE, or ALEX, a teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam, like the TAS, there's so many exams out there that people have to take. Uh, and all these exams have math on them. So if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam, I could definitely help you out. Again, uh, just go to my website. The, the link is in the description of this video and check out my full course catalog. By the way, if I don't have uh, your exam, drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, um, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously help those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to improve in math, uh, if you're like looking for shortcuts, well, I have a few shortcuts in math. But, you know, I would say uh, shortcuts will help you about 1% in mathematics because there really isn't any shortcuts. What you got to do is you got to work hard at learning uh, the, t uh, the subject. Okay. So it all starts with note taking. Now I've been teaching mathematics for decades and it's apparent to me that those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students were like me way back in the good old 1980s. Uh, which, what was I doing? Well, I certainly wasn't taking notes. I was taking notes, but I was writing to my friends saying, hey, what are we doing this weekend, et cetera, et cetera. So listen, I was distracted. I can't even imagine having a cell phone uh, back in those days because I may not even have uh, graduated uh, high school. Or who knows? I wouldn't be making these videos because I wouldn't have gone to college, et cetera. So I get it uh, that you are completely distracted. Um, that's just the way things are, okay? However, you're going to have to have the self-discipline and focus to pay attention to what the teacher is saying and write things down. I'm sorry, there is no other way other than uh, putting in the daily work to take great math notes, but it will pay off, okay? So take great math notes, end of uh, story. Now, in the meantime, you still need something to study from for all the things that you may have missed. So you can use my math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. 
You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, now we're going to get into this polynomial division. Uh, this may be a little confusing for you. This isn't going to be a full lesson on this, but I'm going to demonstrate uh, this problem here. And I'm also going to do the same problem using synthetic division just to make this a uh, you know, impression upon you of how important this is, okay? Now, if you think you can do this, uh, definitely pause the video and, uh, you know, see what you come up with. Now, if you need uh, more additional help uh, beyond this video, I do have other videos uh, on polynomial division in my YouTube channel and my uh, Algebra 2 playlist. However, you probably, you really want to consider taking like my Algebra 2 course, okay, because I really thoroughly get into this. So this video is just going to be a quick review on this. Uh, but not anywhere near the level of instruction I do in my math help program. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to start first by going down memory lane and doing this problem. Okay, do you remember this problem uh, or problems like this way back uh, when you were like in third grade, when we had recess, right? How cool is recess? I wish I had recess. They should uh, make that a law that even adults can have recess. But anyways, uh, let's see if you can do this problem here. Do you remember how to do a problem like this? All right, so what do we do? We're like, mm, okay, we got two. Can two go into three? Yes, two goes into three uh, one time. Now, hopefully, you were taught division, something like how I'm doing it. I know there's newer ways of, of uh, doing division, et cetera. I'm not going to get into uh, commenting on that, but listen, the bottom line is you still need to be able to do this arithmetic. So let's go ahead and continue on. This is the way I was uh, taught way back in the good old 1970s. Uh, I think uh, my one of my teachers was named as Mrs. Pete. All I know is that she was smoking in the classroom. I think that was like 1975. Anyways, let's get back to the prom. So two goes into three how many times? One. So then we go, okay, one times two is two, and then we subtract, right? Then I subtract. I'm like, oh, the answer is one. And then I go, all right, can two go into one? No, it cannot. So I'm going to drop down that seven. And then I'm like, okay, 2 can go into 17. How many times? Uh, I think 8 times. Then I go 8 times 2. That's 16. Then I'm going to subtract, okay, just like I did right here. And then I end up with 1. Can 2 go into 1? No, but I don't have any other numbers to drop down, so I'm done. So I can say uh, 2 goes into 37, uh, 18. Uh, remainder is 1. Or I could go... Uh, 18, and I could write this as 18 and 1 half as well. So hopefully most of you out there uh, remember this because this is called the division division algorithm. All right, this is very, very important in uh, even advanced mathematics. Uh, in an algorithm, if you don't know that, it's uh, basically a computer program. Oh, not a computer program. Yeah, that's pretty much it, like a recipe. It's a step that you follow. Okay, it's like, you know, when I want to do division, I run this uh, computer program. I do these uh, steps, da, 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 da. So that's what you were taught. You may not, uh, you know, your teacher, I'm sure your teacher, like my teacher, wasn't say, today we're going to learn the division algorithm. You start learning division and you naturally kind of just follow these steps. Well, we're going to apply these uh, steps here uh, when we're dividing polynomials. All right. But now let me kind of just quickly uh, tell you why this is so important. Like, why do we even care about dividing uh, polynomials? We're taking one polynomial and we're dividing it into another polynomial. What's this even all about? Well, uh, this skill, what we're doing, is kind of a core skill set to solve uh, solve uh, advanced advanced uh, polynomial equations. This is really what this is talking about. This is the skill that you need to solve uh, advanced polynomial equations. Now I use the word advanced because I'm talking about uh, any polynomial over um, uh, second degree, above a, a quadratic equation. So if I'm saying uh, solve, uh, solve this polynomial equation. All right, I'm just going to make something up here. Um, so here's a polynomial equation. It's degree 4. If this is degree 2, like x squared plus 6x minus 8 is equal to 0, well, hopefully, uh, most of you will recognize this is a quadratic equation. And there's all kinds of ways that we can solve quadratic equations. We could use a quadratic formula, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're interested about 
uh, learning about uh, quadratic equations. Again, this would be like in my Algebra 2 and Algebra 1 course, but I have a ton of videos on this uh, in my YouTube channel in my Algebra playlist as well. So, you know, most you can solve this. Hopefully you've heard of quadratic equations, but we have tools and techniques to absolutely solve this equation. Now, when it comes to something above 2, power of 2, like power of 3, 4, 5, these guys, well, this is a whole different ball game. This is where the real fun starts in mathematics. So this is really what I would classify as more advanced polynomial equations. But guess what? They're equations too, and they deserve to be solved. But we're going to need to uh, use uh, more powerful tools. And polynomial division is part of that uh, new tool set or uh, set of tools that you need to solve these guys. We don't really need them over here because we have the quadratic formula. Okay, so let's put this in context, and when I uh, have a title of like, hey, do you, you really need to know this to pass algebra, I'm not lying, okay? I'm, I'm being uh, very truthful here. All right, let's get into this, and again, if you don't fully understand uh, this, that's okay. A lot of students don't, don't the first time. Of course, you can um, watch this video again. Uh, I've done other videos on this in my uh, YouTube channel, but now I'm going to encourage you to check out my Algebra 2 course uh, to really master this. All right. Now, here's our problem, okay? So we're going to divide this polynomial by this polynomial. And uh, I, I'm specifically using this guy right here for a reason, okay? Now, this could be uh, any two polynomials, okay? And so this works exactly like when we're dividing numbers, okay? We're going to be thinking the same way, all right? But here's how it goes, all right? So let's get started. You can see I've done some work here. So the first thing we're going to do is this. We're going to focus on the variable x, okay? We're going to focus on this part. We don't really care about this other part will come into play. So I'm going to ask you, all right, what can I multiply this by, this x, to get to this here, this number, okay? So uh, what, can I, what do I need to multiply this uh, variable to get to 2x squared, right? This is how you start these problems. So the answer is, well, what if we multiplied by 2x, okay? So if I multiply 2x by this x, I would get to 2x squared, and uh, that's correct, okay? So what we do is once you determine what you need to multiply this variable by this, uh, in this case, it's 2x, now we're going to take that 2x and I'm going to multiply, okay? It's 2x is what I need to multiply x by to get uh, here. That I need to multiply x by 2x to get to 2x squared, okay? So again, I know it's probably a little confusing for those of you out there, but just keep watching. All right, so now that we determine that uh, it's 2x and I need to multiply this by, I'm going to multiply this 2x by this whole thing here, okay? This follows uh, what we were doing with arithmetic here with that basic... Uh, um, problem, I was at 2 divided into 37, whatever it was, right? So now we're going to take this 2, then we're going to multiply it by x minus 5, boop, just like this. So when I do that, i got to use the distributive property, so I get 2x squared minus 10x. I'm like, okay, awesome. What do I do with that? Well, I'm going to subtract that from the polynomial. This is following the same steps as uh, what we're doing with numbers, okay? Let me go back up here, uh, right here. We're doing the same thing, okay? We're like, oh, what goes into this? What? Blah, 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 blah. We're kind of effectively doing the same thing, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and subtract. So distribute this negative. This becomes a negative 2x uh, squared. This becomes a positive. This right here becomes positive. This is, becomes negative. And when I add down, okay, what happens? Well, the 2x squared, these guys go away. This becomes zero because it's positive. This becomes negative. This is positive, that's negative, so I get a 7x, and then I'm going to drop down the remainder of the uh, polynomial here, okay? All right, so if you understand what I just did, well, then all we're going to do, uh, that is the algorithm. We're just going to repeat the algorithm, okay? So now let me go ahead and erase this stuff, and we'll repeat the problem again. All right, so I got uh, 7x now, 7x plus 1, so the question is the following. What do I need to multiply this x by right here to get to 7x? 
Well, the answer should be obvious, 7. So 7 times that x gets me 7x, and I'm going to multiply 7 times this whole thing, and I got that work right here. So 7 times that whole thing gives me 7x uh, minus 35. So I'm going to subtract that underneath here, just like this. Okay, we're going to do the same step. I'm going to distribute this negative sign. So this becomes negative. This becomes positive. And then when I add down, okay, I get 36. And that is it because I can't drop down. So x can't go under 36. And so you are done. Okay, now, but there, you know, we got to write this in a proper way. So let's uh, recall some uh, basic division uh, terminology, vocabulary. All right, so we did polynomial division. You could look at it this way as well. Now, when you look at it in, in this manner, you're probably thinking of factoring, but this is division, but it's really not, you know, kind of the way you're thinking about it. You're probably uh, uh, correctly so looking at factoring and simplifying. But this part that we're dividing into, okay, that's called the dividend, okay, and this part down here is called the divisor. And then our answer is called the quotient. Okay, that's the quotient. And then when you write a remainder in polynomial long division, remember 36 was our remainder right here. Okay, remember our, our last part of our answer? That's the remainder, but you write it uh, over the divisor like this as a fraction. Okay, so this is an introduction to uh, polynomial, <clears throat> excuse me, polynomial long division. All right, now, again, I know I'm covering a lot in a short period of time, but this is important stuff. Now, let's go ahead and do something very interesting here. Okay, now this is, this is really the value of why you want uh, to learn this. So here, let's take a look at um, this part of the problem, okay, which, of course, is called the what? The dividend. All right, then we have the divisor. But uh, let's just focus on this, okay? So... Here is this part of the problem. Let's write this as a function, okay? <clears throat> now you're like, well, where are, you, where are you going with this? Well, I'm going to show you this, okay, here ex precisely because this is really why we're studying this. So I got x minus 5, uh, and I'm dividing it into this polynomial. Now let's evaluate this function right here for 5, okay? What does that mean? Well, I want to find f of 5. That's what it means. I'm plugging in 5 into the function. You understand? Okay, all right. So hopefully you do. Let's go on and do the work. And obviously I've already done it here for us. So when we find f of 5, we plug in uh, 5 for x, just like this. Wherever there's x at, we're going to plug in 5. And when I do all this, I get, what, 5 squared. That's 25. This becomes uh, 3 times 5. That's a negative 15 plus 1. 2 times 25 is 50. So this is a negative 15 plus 1. That's negative 14. So 15 minus 14 is 36. So f of 5 is 36. Hmm, how interesting. Doesn't this number ring a bell? Well, it happens to be the remainder over here. Okay. So there is a connection to this. So you're like, oh, that was interesting. So I evaluated this function for uh, 5, and I got uh, 36 which is ha uh, happens to be when I, uh, the remainder if I divide by 5, okay, or a polynomial where this is 5, okay? And now this is called uh, what we, um, a linear factor. Now, this is just an overview of this stuff, right? I'm, I'm trying to make these connections. Now I'm going to show you another way to do this, and this is super cool. All right, now what I want to do here is I want to find f of 5 of this function, Okay, now this, the way this is written, uh, this number, when you have an x, okay, it's specifically an x, not an x squared, it's an x, all right, let me show you this right here, x minus could be anything, it could be 7. If you're dividing into a polynomial and it's x minus whatever this number is, it's the same thing as evaluating that polynomial for that number, all right? Now, what about if I had x plus 3? Well, we have to write this as x minus a minus 3. So x plus 3, if this was if this was an x plus 3 right here, this would be the same thing as f evaluating the function for f minus 3. This is extremely important, all right? So hopefully you understand, kind of get the essence of what I'm talking about. But in this case, I already have f minus this number. I'm sorry, x minus this number. So 
this is the uh, the value, okay, uh, that uh, is basically I'm going to evaluate this value right here into this function. So uh, what I'm going to be doing here is the same thing is as finding f of 5. Now, remember, I just found f of 5. All right, what is f of 5 equal to? f of 5 is equal to 36. So I'm doing this problem, but now I'm doing this using something called synthetic division, which is totally awesome. It is like, it's and it's actually fun to do. I know some of you might think, okay, this guy's definitely crazy, but uh, it is really, really, it's a shortcut. All right, maybe if you're looking for shortcuts in math, this is one of them, right? All right, so how does this work? Well, it's super easy. What we're going to do is we're going to take this number 2. We're going to plop it down right here. We're going to just drop it. Whoop. We're going to write it to like that. Okay, so here we go. And now, this is a little algorithm. Uh, it's called synthetic division. So we're going to take 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is what? That's 10. All right. Now we're going to add down. Okay, we're going to write our answer right here. We're adding. So negative 3 plus 10 is what? 7. Okay, we'll do this again. So it's going to be 5 times 7. We're going to put our answer right there. What's 5 times 7? Last I checked, it's 35. And then we're going to add down. And what do we get? 36. This last uh, spot, when we do this, this is the remainder. Okay? And it's 36. Okay? This is the same thing. So when you do synthetic division, when you plug in this number, it's like... Basically, you're, you're going into the function. You're saying, what is f of 5 equal to? It, whatever, whatever the remainder is equal to. Okay, Whatever the remainder is, is what f of 5 is equal to. So f of 5 is equal to 36. But look how fast I was able to do this. Okay, I could plug in any uh, number here to quickly evaluate this function. Okay, Now, what you're really looking for is zeros. All right, now, this is a whole other discussion, and that can go on and on and on. But hopefully, you're pretty impressed with that. Hopefully, you're like, wow, that is so cool. Okay. By the way, if you knew this, then I must, uh, you know, give you a large mohawk like we used to have back in the good old 1980s. Uh, we used to use a lot of hairspray. Uh, I think some of you who watch my videos, maybe uh, I've said that before. It's probably pretty dangerous to have that much hairspray in your hair. But anyways, if you knew this and you know uh, all of this, then I'm pretty sure you're tracking for an A plus 100%. Matter of fact, if I was your teacher, I'd say, you know what, just go home uh, and I'll see you next year because uh, you're obviously doing all the right things. You're probably watching that guy on YouTube. But uh, anyways, listen, here's the... Um, the bottom line. You need to understand this. I know it's a little complicated, and uh, this video hopefully was a good introduction, but it, by no means is it a complete full lesson uh, that covers everything you need to know about this. And this is stuff you're going to have to practice. So, um, again, a couple suggestions. One, I have additional videos on polynomial long division uh, uh, on my YouTube channel in my, I think my Algebra 2 playlist, but my best math help on this would be within like my Algebra 2 uh, course um, that, you know, you might want to check out. But uh, if this video was interesting and you actually liked it, okay, if you did like it, wow, that's awesome, please consider smashing that like button and uh, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. Um, I have over a thousand plus videos. And if you like my teaching style, all those videos are there for you. I make these videos so people can watch them all right, and learn uh, math. Right? My passion is to try to make math clear and understandable. Nobody should be failing math. If you're struggling in math, okay, you got to ask yourself, are you doing your part? Your part is to take great math notes every day. Talk to your math teacher. Okay, Don't be a stranger. You know, and then beyond that, there's a ton of resources there available uh, to help you out. And if you like my teaching style, you know, definitely... Um, you know, my videos are there for you, uh, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.